Thank you guys for coming. Um, I know we always have a thousand other options and <clears throat> it seems to be a rather rarefied group of people who decide sitting still for an hour is meaningful. But if there's anything approaching meaning in life, really, <clears throat> it's found in that stillness. The mind will not give you meaning. It's not verbal. It's not even really emotional. It's nameless and wordless. And if you sit still, meaning arises. So again, thank you. West Coasters for showing up. Really appreciate appreciate it. Grateful you're here. I want to talk about something that may be a little bit abstract or esoteric. And that may have a lot more to do with <clears throat> the aging population than the younger population. But I think it's important. And it's been percolating for a few days and the words that come to me most powerfully are additive and subtractive. And that for much of our lives, there is an experience of an additive that we are accommodating and accumulating and expanding into more and more of ourself. And much of that accumulation is a mental construct that we build from memory and experience. And we assume that everything that was gets added onto in some way, and that it becomes more and more us, the who we are. Much of it is held in the mind. Some of it is held in the emotional spaces, but it is a collection of endless, endless moments that as you've heard from other spiritual teachings, occur in the now. Now, 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 now. Even without the punctuation of now, now, just present tense. And this arising of experiential moments weaves its pattern, becomes the tapestry that you know as you. And there's a mental part of you that likes part of it and doesn't like part of it that accumulates and tries to disperse. You are an assemblage, but you are an assemblage of moment to moment reality. And at some point, mostly as you get older, and I talk about it now from experience, you begin to witness the subtraction of that collection of ideas and thoughts and feelings about your history and about who you are. People fall away, memories fall away, ideas fall away, thoughts fall away. It starts to become more and more coagulated in a way and doesn't distinguish itself the way it did. And so you get a little bit lost in the collection of who you are. And then that doesn't stop. More and more will drop off. And not only does it drop off in your own day-to-day -day life, it drops off in the people around you who will start to change, who will no longer be seen in the same way that you are no longer seen, that they are in a way uh, also assemblages, and they, those assemblages can shift and alter in unexpected ways that are wonderful and disturbing. But transformational change 
is really at the core and then the dropping off. And as you drop off yourself, there will be a reaction to that loss. And of course, as I've described quite a bit in previous classes, that reactive element is in a way what really defines you. The stuff that feels lost, that feels different, that feels it's not the way it was supposed to be, that it's not adding up. We all expect life to add up in the way Hollywood movies add up. We all come to the point at the end with the happy ending, that everything resolves itself, that everything becomes as it should, but that is not how it works. It may be in the ultimate last moments of existence that it does come together and add up, and we will discover that. There are people who live for that moment. There are people who claim to have seen that moment. But the journey into real awakening is ultimately a subtraction of everything you know to be you. And one of the stranger parts of that is those of you who have devoted a life to a spiritual practice, as though it is a defining and essential ingredient in your nature and who and what you are. And so if you hold on to anything, it's that definition and that expectation that that spiritual journey will be the thing that adds it all together, that finally gives you the ultimate sense of meaning and purpose. But what I am telling you, for better or for worse, and from my experience, so it may not be universal, is that meaning and purpose do not cohere. Meaning and purpose are part of the subtraction. Letting go of meaning and purpose seems to defile, in a way, your life. It was about something, it was about this, it was about that. Without having meaning and purpose, what are you? Who are you? And that's a really dramatic experience to whoever reacts to it. But in the true, if you will, spiritual journey, that person looking for meaning and experience is the problem because it wants to have it. It wants to have it as part of the additive of your life. Whereas you really need to let go of that meaning and purpose to discover, if you will, that meaning and purpose are the very core of existence. But it's not your existence, it's just existence itself. It has this remarkable sense of presence and coherence that has, sorry to say this, nothing to do with you. Now, that feels cruel on some level, since you've lived this whole life wanting it to have everything to do with you. You wanted to be a spiritual person and whatever that meant, a good person, a nice person, a kind person, and to have that all add up to some kind of possible reward for the life you've lived, that you have finally attained this recognition, this thing, this wonderful space in which you can then depart into the afterlife with all of this accumulation of goodness and meaning and value and love and purpose. But Again, talking from my experience, which may not be ultimate experience, but it is what I am going through, they are, they, the, the totality is taking away anything that makes me separate from itself. It is subtracting Bruce from the equation. It is a truly bizarre experience because Underneath all of this framework of a story, there is this coherent sense that I am experiencing it, that it's my story, that I have some kind of relationship to it, 
And what it's really trying to teach me in the deepest sense and teach all of us in the deepest sense is that we are not the story, we are that which is. And we are in no way separate from the totality of its isness. And our perception of me and it is the last thing to go, especially if you've we've woven a really wonderful persona, a really spiritual, giving, loving, kind-hearted person with a wonderful life and all of these extraordinary achievements and events, which is not common, but does happen. How do you let go of that? Well, first of all, the universe will help you by taking it away. It'll take it out of your mind. It'll take it out of your memory set. It'll take it out of your comfort zone. Life around you will start to alter in very strange ways, as many of us are already experiencing. The predictable, knowable universe that we've all come to expect is no longer operating in the way that we think it should or the way it used to. And we are being removed from the known, the predictable, the secure, the absolute. We are being removed from all of that as a separate recognizable force that is also recognizing the universe. The part that recognizes it is still separate. And that separation has to ultimately be worn down and taken away. The process of death for most of us, if not all of us, is the eroding of the subtraction of everything that separated you from truth. If you have lived a spiritual life, a life of practice, a life of letting go, opening up, being good, being kind, being available, treating others as yourself, knowing it's not about you, all of these elements that are so much at the core of the spiritual journey, if you have been doing that, my assumption is when the time comes to erase all that separateness, it will be a kind of consent. It will be, aha, of course. And you will go, yes, I will be done. And it will, I suppose, drop it all away. If you have not arrived at that capacity, if you've lived a life of selfishness, egohood, mean-spiritedness, calculation, expecting this or that, treating people badly, all of those things, you will be at the end of life with nothing but additive accumulated sense of being. You cannot, I don't think, leave this world with that. It will have to be broken down and taken away. My experience on LSD, this is 50 some years ago, was watching that happen. It was not fun. And I hadn't even accumulated that much. I was in my 20s. But it was like <coughs> pulling it away from me. And I'm going, no, no, that's what I am. It's who I am. Don't do that. And it was horrifically terrible for me. But it kept working at it in a timeless fashion that felt like it went on for billions of years, but it had no time. And it took away separation. It took away individuality. It took away everything I thought I knew about myself. And in the end, I arrived at some kind of stasis. It was a simple, quiet, comforting space. And there was nothing but that. There was timelessness in it. And then, as I've described to you many times before, something happened. I was impregnated. Something entered me. And I broke into twos, fours, continual breaking apart into cellular form. And I was reconstructed in very strange ways so that the body and the environment I was in, which was physical space, all reconstructed themselves, sometimes the ceiling and my hand at the same time and head and floor all came back together. And there I was back in this. 
And I remember two things. One was roaring with laughter. And the second was saying, why did I come back? And as you've heard before, this voice came into me and it said to tell people what you saw. And then it presented me with a life track in which I had to prove I could do it, that I was willing to do it, that I would serve it at any cost, which is really kind of what it demanded. And then I presented as best I could to the world, the visions I had as whatever they may have been. And this talk is like another version of that. It's an opportunity to share with you some of the more esoteric realities of what I was told to share. And the reality which is unfolding for me day by day is right now kind of scary, strange, unexpected, and yet totally predictable. I am being dismantled more and more, as is everything around me. The world that I knew and cared about is being up and is an upheaval. Blanche and I are both losing our memories to some degree, our minds to some degree, our history. It's really fascinating. And I'm just watching it happen. And I'm feeling these periods of pain and suffering and loss and grief. And then suddenly what comes up is this incredible sense of preciousness and poignancy about life. And they do this weird dance. But what really is happening is they drop me out on a regular basis from all purpose and meaning and they just leave me hanging out to dry. And there's a me that has to go, why? And then it does got it gets no answer. It just sits there quietly for it takes a while to get to quiet. But when I get to quiet, there's just emptiness. And then this miraculous thing happens over and over, which is into that empty space, this thing comes up, which is a kind of fullness. And it feels like, and I've described this multiple times, love. It just feels like love comes out of nowhere and joy and beauty and truth. And you watch it rise up and you go, you know, from whence cometh thou? But it is an amazing thing that comes and you sort of understand that that is your true nature. Not you individually, us collectively. We are this exquisite thing of love, goodness, kindness, truth, beauty. We are that. And yet to know that, you have to get rid of the knower. And they will make sure that you do that. They being truth and beauty itself. It washes away the separateness and it lets you be that truth that you are. It is an incredible journey. It is very subtle. It takes a lifetime, as Rudy would always say. And I think many people make very few incremental steps during that time. We're very hesitant, very cautious, very, we'll do this, we'll do that. We want to feel secure, comfortable, sort of like we know something, that we're on the path. All of that stuff makes us feel better. But I'm telling you, unfortunately, the path disappears. It gets taken away. Everything gets taken away, which is what it has to do, except the thing that cannot get taken away, which is totality itself. The inevitability of being eternal and absolute reality. That's where we're all going. You can contribute to that process or you can fight it. You can contribute to it by living a life which Buddha and Christ both call the life of kindness, goodness, and putting others before yourself. That's kind of how you live it. If you do that and you don't make yourself the center of the universe, things fall away more easily and you do not have to be a spiritual person for that. Many people I know arrive at the end of their life without any spiritual training, and yet they finally have gone, okay. So entering the dance and being part of it actually can, can make it more complicated because the part of you that wants to do it, that wants to live the spiritual journey, that wants to give it up, that wants to step away, that wants to be all those things, in a way is 
affirming those things and becoming an additive at a moment where this subtraction is required. It's a natural process. Your spiritual life can aid that and it can obstruct that, kind of depending on how you use it and what you're expecting from it. I know when I walk and do my daily circles around my house or walk outside, the, the work is letting it go and feeling as I do the loss, great loss. And at the same time saying, okay, this is a process. I don't know why I'm going through it other than I was told, tell people what you saw. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just sharing this and I could be completely wrong and I'm happy to be wrong, but I don't think right or wrong are exactly the right words here. I can only tell you that the what is, is operating and it is profound. And if you enter into the what is, you will find it's not about you, it's about not you. And it's about you caring and loving and being available to all that surrounds you, to all that's in your life, to being the light in the darkness, to being goodness as opposed to badness, finding a way to serve this unnameable, unknowable reality that you happen to embody. It's an extraordinary journey, truly extraordinary. And if you're lucky enough to wake up to that journey while you're actually living it, you will walk around knowing what God is, knowing what truth is, knowing what love is, knowing what beauty is. You may not be able to hold on to it. You may not be able to become the bearer of it. You just are it. And the part of you that can't hold and cannot take that is subtractive will reveal to you more and more and more about the truth of your essential being. And that's what we're doing here. And some of you are moving rapidly in that direction. Some of you are tiptoeing a little bit toward it. Some of you are looking for benefit and acknowledgement. Some of you are looking for true freedom and release. You know what you're doing. You all know what you're doing. But I can tell you, it is a process. It is not a comfortable process necessarily because we are attached to the additive. We are attached to the totality of our personal self, which in fact obstructs our understanding of and our experience of the non-personal, the impersonal truth. But that's what we are, it's where we're headed. We all go there in the end, and you can go there gently into that good night, or you can fight it every step of the way. I will tell you, there seems to be an advantage in the moment to moment reality of your life. If you can just go, okay, awesome, awesome. It's an amazing thing. Not always easy because so much of our programming is the outer. So much of our programming is to want it to form in a certain way and unfold in a certain way. It's gonna do what it wants to do. Your life is an accumulation of moment to moment truth and you have woven it into the story of who you are and they are going to unweave it with your approval or not. If you can give it approval, it's an easier journey and it actually is an awakening journey and you will come to know yourself even while you're still here in a body, in a mind that's in a sense separate from and yet one with all there is. It's an extraordinary thing to be able to move toward that and to give yourself over to that. And that's what we're doing sitting here. We're just trying to let go, let go, let go, not for the advantage of anything, but to be one with each other, to the reality that we're not separate really from each other and to be true to that self that we are collectively and separately at the same time. It's an amazing reality. If you figure out the meaning of it, let me know. Or the purpose of it, I don't know other than because it's wonderful in many ways, terrifying, wonderful. It's all there is, we're in it and we share it and we can make it easier for each other or not, depending on how we uh, play the game. So thank you for coming today. We're all playing it together. 
We are <clears throat> moving forward together. We help each other in a way by assembling and even looking at it together, letting go of the meaning of it, but just being with it and allowing ourselves to unfold into truth that has been there all the time. So thank you for joining me in this. Any, any questions? God knows if I can answer them, but I would be happy to give a shot at it. Todd. I don't know if it's a question as much as just a sharing. Uh, yeah, thank you for describing, I guess, the unknowable. I was going to use the word explain, but I guess that's stupid because you can't really explain the unknowable, but your description really resonates with my experience. Thank you. You know, I don't, I don't want to say, I don't take this lightly, but I recognize as soon as the moment I turn the screen on and you're there, the sacredness of the opportunity to show up as a student and have a teacher that's willing and able to like take my shit, or at least the invitation is there to just let it go and share thoughtlessness uh, with somebody and see what happens. And it's amazing, right? There's this infinite experience that I can't describe. And yet in the next moment, I can like fall to stupid immediately and like turn on the news and just get caught up in a different nervous system. And I guess that's part of the infinite is the nothingness and the infinite experiences within it and to notice that without getting caught up in it, yeah, I guess is the magic of this practice for me. And so, yeah, I'm just in awe and gratitude for this practice because literally I can be doing something, turn this on and enter a space that to me is the most holy and sacred place I've experienced, knowing that in one second, I can also drop out of that place, but knowing that that now is always available and there's comfort in that discomfort, I suppose. So I just want to thank you for, you know, for me, like 25 years of just showing up, doing exactly what you were told, I guess, to do in your experience and, and, and listening to that voice, because it's deeply impacted me as I'm sure it has, you know, a lot of people. Well, Todd, I really love how wonderfully you articulate all this. It really is beautiful. Thank you. And uh, I, I just say yes to everything you just said. And uh, you know, you have been around for, for many years and, and you are one of those people who I see, you know, arriving at clarity. And I can't say you're there all day long, but often when we connect, there it is. And when two people connect in that space, well, there we are. And it's a beautiful, really remarkable thing. And, uh, you know, one can be intellectual about it. One can just be, I don't know what it is, articulate about it. and. Uh, and it speaks its own truth. And when it does, everything knows it. Everything knows it's true. And there's nothing other than sort of acknowledgement and reflection on the amazement of truth, which we are all in, every one of us. And some of us know it. Some of us know it for a brief second. Some of us know it for our unfolding of our lives. And some of, it, some of us never come across it at all, in which case, maybe we're given multiple opportunities. I don't know. But I do know we are very lucky people. Yes, George. It's also an observation from, I guess, being old. <laughs> but your metaphor of a roller coaster sometimes is what life is really about. You're, you're attaining, getting things as you're going up, and then you're letting go as you're going down. You, you feel terrified about losing. But you know, life is really much like Groundhog Day movie, you keep getting, repeating things and realizing you got to get it right. So like, thanks for the practice. Thanks for Rudy's practice anyway. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, Rudy was one of the people who truly put this into perspective and it's still, you know, Rudy taught me for seven years. I've been doing this for 50 now. I keep wondering, you know, what's that about? But in truth, you know, it all comes from that seed. It's that seed form that was so vibrant and alive, and that goes back to Nityananda, and it goes back and back and back. There is a truth that unfolds in the world, and those of us who are lucky enough to take a bite of that apple, you know, really feel the fullness of that awareness that comes. And sometimes we feel it for prolonged times, and sometimes just for a second, but even a second changes your life. So it's the, the world's always been crazy, uh, and it's yeah. our. our our work is to really separate from the craziness, I think. So it's beautiful. Anybody else? I have a I have a sort of simple, almost technical question, Bruce. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. um, I remember like uh, in, for years from the tradition of Rudy, like after, after the open eye class, there would be the uh, direction to please close your eyes. And like kind of, that was like a sign to kind of assimilate. And then I noticed at a certain point that directive stopped and I was wondering whether that was in, an intentional shift for you and how you're experiencing the work or if that, if that happened with Zoom, I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not sure I know either. I don't, uh, I remember that happening with Rudy. Uh, <clears throat> okay. But I, but I, I'm not, I'm not a technician really on any level. Um, yeah. And I think for anybody who feels it natural to close their eyes at the end of the class, that's a smart thing to do. But for me, it's, it never ends. It's, it's still, it's a continuum of experience. And uh, okay. I say, you, you, you never used to, I thought they used to, you used to ask people to close their eyes afterwards. You don't remember that? Maybe I'm. My memory at this point is <laughs> not worth anything. I, don't, I truly do not remember. But it okay. sound, sounds very familiar. <laughs> Is that okay. a question? Uh, yes, um, so I do have a question. I, if you hadn't have been so focused on the additive for so many years, let's say you were, you know, like 30, let's say you were my age, and do you, what, what would you imagine the experience would be if you hadn't been so tilted towards one side because you were, additive now you're subtracted but what if you were just neutral earlier on i you know i sort of got from rudy that while you're growing additive is natural and appropriate and i would not necessarily feel as able to let go of my life at this point having if i hadn't had it but not having things for many people becomes a, a an an attraction, an, a, 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 an obstacle, but a thing they can't let go of. Oh, I didn't do this, or I didn't get that, or I should have had this. And all of that becomes really problematic. So Rudy pushed me really hard to get everything I was looking for in life. And quite honestly, I did. I, there's very little I got, didn't get in life. I always say you can always have more sex. But other than that, I got everything that I really hoped for and wanted in this lifetime. And so I am able to let go of it. Many people cannot subtract the stuff that they didn't get, which is absurd, but absolutely true. The thing is live a full life, have the additive and have, if you can, and I was lucky with this, a practice that looks at what you're doing and opens to it and lets go even as it's happening, recognizes it and goes, help me to surrender, help me to let go, which is what I did for the entire years of my practice with Rudy. So at this point in time, they've been working together, although now I have to say the subtractive is much more powerful than the additive because there's very little coming in at this point. You know, I get these little moments with my grandchildren, you know, I get occasional add-ons that, that, that feel good, but I have nothing in me that's grasping them anymore because I know they're not gonna last. It's gonna be for two seconds and they're gone. So I appreciate it in the moment and then I let it go. That seems to me to be the old age version of spiritual practice. The early version of it is take it all on and let it go as it occurs. If you can do that, it's masterful and it's a great way to live. Does that help? It, it does. Um, I, have, I have another question. It's kind of the same question, but just in the context of the meditation, which is sometimes, you know, there's that focus of drawing in energy and drawing in energy. In this class, I had the experience of like an unraveling was the was the word that came up just letting it go and is that just kind of whatever the the weather energetic weather happens to be of the class or? well i think the real energy of the class which you're trying to absorb is about unraveling that's really what it's trying to do you're trying to let it in to free you from the constructs of your of your of your idea of self the construction of you if you let this thing in, it will start to unravel you and you will actually feel lighter, better, freer than you did at the beginning of the class. You may know why, you may not know why, but something will have opened and expanded in a way that it would not if you're just taking in energy for your own whatever, benefit, purpose, direction, career, meaning, 
all that stuff. And some people do do that and for a long time, but at some point it will fall apart because you cannot hold that together. At a certain point, everything falls apart, everything. And it's really, if you can let that be service now, as it's coming together and let it fall apart, coming together and let it fall apart, you are in the present tense. You are living as opposed to creating a false structure that's not gonna last. Not false, but structure that ultimately has to be dismantled either Thank by you or the other forces. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, George? Uh, oh, sorry, I'll get everybody. Just, just an observation of Rudy's teaching from, I remember a few years ago, a lot of young people said that they're going to surrender, you know, all this wealth that they don't have. And he said, you have to have it in order to surrender it. Otherwise it's meaningless. And then Rudy contained a lot in his life. He had owned numbers of buildings, incredible Asian art collection. He was very psychic how he bought he bought Indian stones and nobody wanted them. And then all of a sudden they were, you know, incredible. But, you know, he knew how to surrender things too. Right. I, I think that's a very powerful and important teaching. Bill. Thank you, Bruce, for such a deep and profound talk. That was very beautiful and meaningful to me. And I really appreciate it. Um, I had an interesting experience in class. I've sat with you for a long time. So this is almost like a first year student question, but it was extraordinary. I had a deep class and I think I had more phantasmagoric mind activity than I've ever had in class. It was like 20 James Bond movies while having a deep class. It was extraordinary. And I was attached to it and also was trying to, in that space where I could just watch it. And I don't know if if you could talk about that but i just after all these years i was like what it's like fireworks like what is going on but then your talk also is exactly addressing that it was well, it's it was all me it's like all the stuff i'm attached to while also watching it going oh my god it's so thank you let me tell you phil that we are unique in ways that are unlike anybody else and we have our journey there are certain commonalities, but in <clears throat> reality, none of us are alike on some really deep and profound levels. We have our own configuration and we lay it out and we play it out according to what we are and how we've been putting it together. So what happened for you, not necessarily uncommon, not my experience, but definitely worthy and wonderful that it happened. Erica. Okay. I've, I've been trying to formulate an intelligent question about this topic for years, I think, but um, so you've, and you've talked about this many times and you've said to me sometimes that uh, I might realize someday that I'm not, I don't really exist. Like I'm not really here. And I relate to everything you're saying, everything you say, but when it comes to that, I don't know if I'm capable of coming to that understanding. No, no you're, you're not because there isn't anybody who will recognize it. That disappears. You will not recognize that you don't exist. Absolutely, all that takes place is you don't exist. There's nobody there to go, oh my God, I don't exist. That's gone. It just occurs. It's the natural. <laughs> the thing that doesn't, that, that finally has to go away is the recognition element in you that's still separate from it. And there is no real separation. So when that thing kind of just goes like this, like my grand, like my mother-in-law, like that, that's as close as you get going, oh, there's, I don't exist, I never existed. I mean, I've watched programs on people with Alzheimer's who don't remember their mothers and fathers. They don't, they just have no recollection of having that. And you go, that's just, and that's just part of it so much falls away that there's no ultimate part of you that goes, oh my God, I'm getting rid of everything. Because the part of you that says that or thinks that is still very coherent and needs to be freed and will be at some point. So you won't be there for that. Not in the sense that you are, but you will be there in the, I'm, I'm saying this without 
what can I say, absolute truth in my brain, but I, I know from my experience that you will be there without a name, without a personality, without a story, without a narrative, without having done anything, without having had children, without having had built a life, all of that will go, and there you are. The thing that thought all that happened, that mentalized it, that created the narrative and the story of that, all that kind of goes away and you are the endless witness to the amazing reality that that occurred as a past tense maybe, but even that goes away because past no longer exists. It just, so don't try to understand it because you that understanding and that trying to even give it a voice will get in the way. Ultimately, they're gonna pull that out of you. And as they do that, it's a big loss because we have a real big desire to know and understand the truth, but the truth doesn't include us anymore as a separate knowing. It is already known and you are that. Okay, I believe you. <laughs> How do you know that though? That's what I want to know. How do you Here know again? that? I, How do I, you know? I know it because, I, let me tell you how I know it. They give me moments of it that are so overwhelming and so powerful. And then I go back into story. And then I go back into day to day and I go, oh my God, that occurred. That thing happened. And then I weave that back into the Bruce story. And then they come back at me again and go, nope. And they <clears throat> pull it out and I go through the same kind of despair and like, oh my God, you know, who am I? I sit here every time I give a talk and give a class, like going, who the hell am I to do this? I have no idea. And I don't, I often, you know, I say this in class, I don't know that I should even continue doing it. On the other hand, I think they take over, they, Rudy's word, they, and they give, they give this instruction and they give it to me all day long. And I, there are times where it, I am I am lifted up by it, and there are times I am emptied out by it, and there are times there is nobody there at all. And I go, huh, that's all I can tell you. I could be full of shit, and if I am, I completely apologize to you, but I have a feeling this is, there's some truth to what's being said here. So like you get a, like a peek at it. Yeah, a peek or an actual immersion in it, or everything falls away, and I go, ah, I go into a place of emptiness that is beyond anything I've ever known. It's despairing until it's not. And then I'm there with nothing. There's no, there's nothing. And then this thing comes up and it's like joy or bliss or love or beauty or truth. And I go, and then it gets woven back into the story. And I have to go, nope, don't do that. Don't do that. It's hard. For me, some people may be brilliant at it, but I'm not that person. This is work. Rudy called it work also. So that's what I do. And I share it. And I can share it with you. And if it helps, terrific. If it doesn't help, turn this off. There is no need to come back here for anything unless it speaks to you. Okay. I think I would like to have a peek at it someday. Well, you're, you're looking at it right now. Okay, thanks. Anybody else? Okay, thank you guys for hanging in here. I see a lot of you have checked out, I totally get it. <laughs> and uh, you know, it'll be on <clears throat> YouTube. So if you ever need to hear this again, that's available. If you don't need to hear it again, <clears throat> that's all fine with me. I love you guys for showing up. It allows this thing to be expressed, which it wants to be. That you listen deeply is really uh, meaningful.